Okay, so now we're ready to solve some problems um, that can be classified as binomial probability distribution type problems. Um, so this statement here says given some number of trials we want to know what the probability of seeing exactly some number of successes. Um, so we have that statement there but to say it in a more um, kind of straightforward fashion the trials may be something like an individual shooting free throws some number of free throws or it may be um, let's say that a person has n kids um, so for both of these scenarios there are we're looking at either some number of free throws or some number of kids but then we want to know ex um, out of those particular scenarios what's the probability of having exactly our successes so making our free throws that would be considered our um, success or our outcome of interest or if we have in um, in kids our successes in um, with having kids would be maybe having a girl if that's what we're interested in so success could certainly depend on the um, the statement and the problem so making a free throw is a, su a success or if we're trying out some new drug that um, makes it more or less probable to have a girl or a boy let's say if it makes it more probable to have a girl we might say all right fine the drug works that's a success so given some number of efforts what's the probability of of having our successes out of that given 20 free throws right what's the probability of making exactly 15 of them um, so one thing that we do need to know is um, for any one of these scenarios for example making a free throw the probability of making one you know? so now even though we're shooting 20 free throws what's the probability of making exactly one we need to know what that is so if it's free throws um, it might be something like maybe someone has an 89 percent chance of making one free throw or if it's a drug that's um, supposed to tilt the balance so that the girls are maybe even more um, likely to happen um, then that would be, for example, a probability of having one girl if you, is, is 52%. But for all of these, these trials, they're either a make or a miss. And so that's what makes um, uh, the things that we're looking at Bernoulli trials. So in an earlier lecture, we were able to determine um, and derive that if I have some number of trials and if we're interested in let's say we're interested in having three girls and order really didn't matter and we're looking at um, 10 kids if we had so let's say that this is the scenario that we're interested in three girls and um, let's do it like this three girls and uh, seven boys So seven boys and three girls. The probability of that event happening, um, where you have a girl and a girl and a girl and a boy and a boy, dot, 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 repeat that, um, 
is the product of those probabilities. It's the multiplication rule. So if the probability of having a girl is 52%, um, the probability of having a boy is going to be the opposite of having a girl, or 0 0.48. So this that's um, going to be a consistent idea that appears with the Bernoulli trials. Um, that we're going to do some number of trials. Success will be one probability and failure, or the opposite of success, the complement of that, will be one minus. So these two probabilities will always add up to one for problem set up this way, just like the 0.52 and the 0.48 add up to 1. We want to find the, if we know one, we can find the other by just doing 1 minus what that other one is. And if we use the multiplication rule, um, and, and it, we're also making an assumption that if you have a girl, the second girl that you have that probability is still going to be 0.52 and if you have another child the probability of having a girl is still 0.52 so these are independent events as we go through here they're all independent events one does not depend on the other so the probability is always the same so it's 0.52 times 0.52 times 0.52 times probability of having a boy, which is 0.48 times 0.48, and I think there are seven of those. And the shorthand way of writing that would just be 0.52. Um, and if the number of successes that we're interested in is three, it's, um, we'll call that R, but it's going to be 0.52 to the power of three times 0.48 to the power of 7. So how many ways can we um, have 10 kids where three of those are girls in order doesn't matter? Right? How many ways? How many ways can we do that? Um, let me generalize this formula that we've just seen once again. Again, um, you might want to look at the earlier notes to to remind yourself of of this. Um, but it looked like this: one minus something like this. I know that if I have ten um, and I'm interested in three successes, then this would be the number of non-successes in minus r. I won't call them failures, but um, non-successes or um, the complementary event. And so we saw that just now. Those two values will always have to equal the number of trials. And if you look at this and add it to that, um, then that should give you um, the number of, of trials. So you add the R plus the N minus R, and of course it's just going to be the number of trials. Um, and if order doesn't matter, there are, out of the 10, there are um, 10 choosing three, so NCR, different ways where we could have three girls out of the ten kids. Um, three girls, ten boy combinations. Um, so the most general formula is this one right here. So NCR times the probability of having a girl times 1 minus that probability over n minus r. And our calculator um, would certainly um, give that to us if we, a, a couple of different ways. We could just plug in the values. Uh, NCR would evaluate to 120. 
probability of having a girl we've seen to be uh, 0.52. Number of successes we're interested in is 3. 1 minus 0.52 is the 0.48. So these two values up top will again will always equal the number of trials. These two values here will always add up to 1 or 100%. So, um, so we can get a value from that, um, and we can also drop this into our calculator, binomial PDF, where if you just simply put in the number of trials, the probability of a success, and the number of successes that we're interested in. Those three values in PNR correspond to the values in P and R um, are the only things that we need to, um, to figure out the probability of having exactly that number of successes, um, exactly R successes. So in your calculator, binome PDF 10.52 and 3. And notice that since the probability is always 1 or less, um, you can look for the middle value to always be the smallest, just to help you remember which goes into which val which number goes into which spot either spot A B or C um, the first spot will always be the number of trials and will always be the the largest the next one will always be the, the smallest since it'll be a fraction and then this value will be in between those two number of trials probability of success and then the number of successes we're interested in. So let's see if we can quickly get that number and then move on to another example. Um, let's pull up our calculator. Okay, so let's plug this into our calculator. Second. distribution and binom PDF 10 trials probability of success, success is 0.52 and then we're interested in exactly three successes paste that and we get a value of 0 0.099 and if we also do this the other way longer way I'm going to go to math select probability functions choose in CR so 10 choose 3 and then it's point 10 choose 3 so let's do that again we're going to go to math CR 10 choose 3 hit the right cursor to get out of that mode multiply that times the 0.52 um, and raise it to the power of um, let's delete that let's raise it to the power Um, how many 
arrows we're interested in. Three. Hit the right arrow. Times number, uh, the probability of having a boy times the number of boys. So raise it to the power of seven. it to the wrong power. Let's look at the result. 0 0.099, and if you recall, that's the same answer. 